Hey everybody, this is going to be a really everything but the kitchen sink video of assorted vinyl finds. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of genres in here, all kinds of artists. It's going to go all over the map here. You're not going to know what's coming next. Um, usually I make separate videos just for the Beatles, but in this particular case I'm going to throw a few Beatle finds that I found that aren't, weren't many. But instead of waiting for more and more items, I figure I'll just lump them in here with all the other artists for this particular video. So I got a little bit of everything. Uh, if you stick by, you'll see all kinds of stuff coming out of left field, I think. Um, also wanted to make a little bit of an announcement that uh, I'm really going to try hard to fight my vinyl addiction for the next month. And what I mean by that is, uh, for personal financial reasons, you know, we all have financial issues. I really am finding that I've been spending way too much money on records and uh, not enough on other things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the entire month of May staying out of my favorite record store. Now, that's easier said than done and we'll see how I do. Uh, I, that's the goal anyway. Whether I'm going to accomplish it or not is another story. But I'll still be going to flea markets and things where I might find good buys for a dollar or two. I'm talking about not going into the, the record stores where you know there's more expensive records and you're spending more like twenty dollars an album or something like that ten dollars an album i need to give that a rest for a while so i'm going to try to do it uh as a lot of you uh, may have remembered we had a, a subject a while ago i think it was john k techhead brought it up about what kind of money tricks do you use to, to keep yourself from spending too much money on vinyl and for me i've always said i can't i can't do that i'm just uh, I'm a sucker for a vinyl album that I have to have. So my only way of fighting that urge is just not to go in and be tempted in the first place. So it's stay out of the record stores for about a month. Let's see how I do. Okay, now on to the vinyl finds that I have here. I'm going to start with this one. There's, there's a few El just a few Elvis Presley items. One of them is a VCLT, uh, a trade really, that I made with Spellerine. Uh, it's Scott... Uh, Scott uh, really wanted a record. He, uh, he saw one of my videos and there was an Elvis record, a New Year's Eve concert of Elvis from 1976. And he really needed a copy of that. So I just felt like I wanted to help out a fellow member of the VC. So I bought him that album from my store. And then we decided that let's just do a trade. So we traded. And here's an album that he traded with me. This is Elvis, The Rock and Rebel. And I always wanted this album. I used to see this in, in the, I guess, in the 1970s and early 80s in, like, record magazines. And the cover was so cool. I wanted it just for the cover. But I played this whole album through. It sounds great. And it's got great, great stuff on it. It opens up like that, which is really a nice cover. It's got the gatefold inside. And uh, I was able to trade the album that Scott had wanted me to pick up for him for this and also one other one <clears throat> it was this version of Kiss and Cousins Elvis Presley movie uh, it's a Canadian release so I mean I have this album already but I figured because it was a Canada release it would be something different so I traded with him uh, for those two records so thanks Scott and that was that. Um, I also came across a couple of sealed Elvis albums. This one being a Pickwick album. Elvis, Frankie, and Johnny. Still in the Shrink. Never opened. And this one. Still in the Shrink. Almost in Love. Never opened. And it's got the sticker on there. It's from May's Department Stores, which uh, I used to shop at with my mom when I was a kid. One more Elvis album for this uh, particular video. Uh, this one here is a Canadian tribute. So you know, the, the price was right on these. I have one Elvis EP in very good condition, which I don't know. Don't know if I've shown this before or not. I might have. It's uh, Peace in the Valley. In nice condition. Uh, 
Okay, that's it for Elvis. Um, recently, came across this. It's a Rolling Stones album that I needed for a long time. The first album in the U.S. Rolling Stones, England's newest hit makers. And I don't know, I get the feeling this is an unusual copy because the texture of this cover is very, very papery. It's not gloss. It's like a paper texture. And I don't know, uh, somebody told me that this was uh, odd. The FFRR edition of it. Any real Stones fanatics out there, maybe you can tell me. Um... <clears throat> I'll show you the record. I don't know if this is original. I mean, this is is the it says London, the London uh, FFRR full frequency range recording, but it's also it's got the poly line bag in it. So I don't know if it's original or not, but and the record just in great condition. And uh, I played this right away. Sounds very good. I think maybe I will eventually do uh, my first time spins review of this album somewhere down the line. Okay. Um, okay, now for something different. George McRae, Rock Your Baby. Now, I love that song. And I bought this because it was it was really cheap, and also because I liked the one song. And what really drew me to the album was the version of Rock Your Baby on here is 6 minutes and 20 seconds. And I'm one of those people with a song like that. I like it so much, I, don't, I only want to get more of it. So <clears throat> I so far played side one of this album. I didn't play the whole thing yet. And uh, there's more of the same on this. <coughs> it sounds similar. You know, if you like that early disco type of stuff. I mean, the song Rock Your Baby was such a big hit when it came out in, in the mid-70s. And I just remember being at the beach a lot, as I often say, in the transistor radio and hearing that song. So, let's see. Now we got here. This is an album. Paul and Paula sing for young lovers. And, of course, they had the hit song, Hey Paula. And it's on... Uh, well, I won't open it up. It's the Phillips label, you know. I usually associate the Phillips label with the Four Seasons. But this was a dollar. Pretty good shape for a dollar. Okay. Um, here's... What's next to show? I'm trying to get a different sequencing. I've shown this now a, a few times on different videos, but for those who may not have seen it, it's a repressing of the 1984 album Glorious Results of a Misspent Youth by Joan Jett and the Blackhearts as a Record Store Day release. And for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, it's on, it's supposed to be pink vinyl. It looks closer to purple and it's very transparent, very nice looking. couple of things here I gotta remove out of the way to get in the way of the camera so um, what else do I have here to show okay uh, next album is an album I already had I think two other times and it's one of those albums I keep finding in better condition and I keep upgrading it this one is it's here it's uh, Donna Summer Bad Girls and uh, I bought this album because it's in such great shape. I mean, it's got the original shrink on it, and it's got the hype stickers there. So, hype sticker. So that's why I went ahead with it. I mean, I got this album a couple of times already, and each time a little better. But uh, I can't resist. It was only five bucks, and it was, like, brand new. I just love great condition albums, you know? Stuff in really great shape. Even if I have it already, I upgrade, as long as it's not an outrageous price or anything. Um, okay, here's a cool album. The Holly's Greatest. This is an import. UK import. And back cover. It 
it's on the upside down parlophone, parlophone label. So, really like the cover and you know, because my record store is always so fair priced with these things, you know, it's easy to collect them. Okay, now for something completely out of left field. I was at my flea market one day, and I found this. It was in great condition. I don't know what possessed me to buy it, but nostalgia probably, but Patty Duke. How's that for something different? Don't just stand there. <laughs> and I thought, wow, this album is really cheap. It's at a flea market. The, uh, this is the back cover. You know, the record itself, I mean... Unsurprisingly, I mean, it's got its, it's got its original inner sleeve, and perhaps unsurprisingly, to some people, it looks like it's never been played. I mean, this thing is like right out of the factory. It's like beautiful, and I thought for like a dollar at the flea market, just to have a vintage piece of nostalgia like this, why not? And I checked the song list. And it did have some songs on there that would be interesting to hear. I mean, songs I know, uh, World Without Love, Don Cushane, um Too Young. I wonder if that's the uh, Nat King Cole one. The End of the World. So, it was worth the shot. Okay, also found these things really cheap. Uh... This was at a thrift store, a honky-tonk piano album. Eddie Barnes. Eddie Pianola Barnes. I don't know what it is about honky-tonk piano. I find myself buying those albums. And I here's the 10-inch album that I was talking about at the beginning. This is a small size. I mean, where do you find this? For another one for a dollar. Honky-tonk piano by this... Uh, his fingers, uh, Knuckles, Knuckles O'Toole. I don't know if it's a Knuckles O'Toole one, but anyway. But what's cool about it is, like I said, I love 10 inch albums, but with me, whenever I go out there and I see a 10 inch record, I always want to add it to my collection. I'm always hoping that it's something that I can use because I don't, I don't just buy any 10 inch record just to have more 10 inch records. But if it's something I really like or something at least halfway there, you know, I'll pick it up. Uh, Waldorf. It says Waldorf Music Hall record. You know, I don't know what it is about 10 inch records. Uh, one day when I was at the flea market, I got this Neil Diamond's Greatest Hits, great condition, shrink wrap on it. A little, you know, I'm a sucker for like, I like Neil, uh, Neil Diamond, and uh, when you see something like this that looks really vintage and in great shape, can't resist. Okay, um, picked up, I, I, I might have this already, I don't know, both of these. Cheap 45 at the flea market, Pat Benatar hit me with your best shot, picture sleeve. And for all I know, I have these already, like I say. I, I lose track of what singles I have. Stevie Nicks, Leather and Lace. Picture sleeve, single. Okay. Um, I found this at Goodwill recently. To add to my Connie Francis collection. Live at the Sahara in Las Vegas. Connie Francis album I did not have. Okay, now I'm going to finish up with Beatles-related stuff. Not that much. That's why I put it all together here. First, I was happy to find this. This is the Ringo album, but it's uh, the UK version where it says Ringo Starr on the top, which is not on the US, and it's a you know, little different packaging. That's always a, a fun thing of mine. I, I like collecting for different packaging, even if it's kind of subtle like that. So... It's on the MFP label, uh, Music for, for Pleasure. So, gave this a spin. Sounds really good. Um, okay, another one. 
on this for a dollar at the flea market one day. Stu, uh, Stu Phillips and the Holly Ridge Strings. I, I, every time I think I've had every kind of Beatles-related Holly Ridge Strings albums I can find, I keep finding more. They're just instrumentals. Uh, Stu Phillips and the Holly Ridge Strings. The George, John, Paul, and Ringo songbook. So, and they got songs on here like Bangladesh, Uncle Albert, My Sweet Lord, uh, Another Day, It Don't Come Easy. So it's not just the same Beatle group songs you always hear all the time. Something a little different. Okay, um, I picked up some Beatles-related picture sleeves. First, I have this one, which is Lady Madonna and the Inner Light in really great condition. And I'm hoping this is an original. I, my, the guy in my store said it was. Is this one of the picture sleeves that they reissued? Because sometimes, that's why one of the things I despise about reissues, because you never know when you have an original or a reissue. I think this is, a, this is an original in great shape. So, it's a good picture sleeve. And this one also in really good shape. Another one I needed of the Beatles. The Long and Winding Road picture sleeve single. That's in good shape. And this is the last item for this particular video. Uh, not a very attractive picture sleeve, but this one in really good shape. Uh, it's George Harrison for his single Ding Dong Ding Dong. From 1974 and uh, I think that just about covers everything well as I say folks let's see how I do you know I'm not making any promises to myself or to you I may I'll, I'll own up to it if I weaken in my endeavor if I find out that I can't sustain the willpower and I wind up going into my record store in May so be it or you know I may go in there just to say hi but it doesn't work for me because if there's something I really want, I gotta, I, I can't resist. I can't buckle down. And why should you? I mean, you know, better to stay out of the store because, I, personally, this is just for me. I think it's foolish if you if you have some cash one way or another, either on you or on a card, credit card or something, and you see an album that you've always wanted and you can't do without, and if the price is right and the moments now or never, you know, you gotta pick it up. So better to just avoid the temptation. Stay out of the store altogether. Thanks for watching, everybody.